Lesson 14, Fractions and Whole Numbers. In the last lesson, we went over the basics of multiplying and dividing with fractions. And in all of our examples, both of the numbers were fractions. But sometimes you'll see a problem that has a whole number and a fraction multiplied or divided. Let me show you a simple example. See, here's 15 times 2 ninths. 15 is obviously a whole number. And the way to do this is, first, we turn 15 into a fraction by putting it over 1. And now we've got two fractions multiplied. And we know how to do that. Let's go ahead and do the calculation. We need to factor and cancel first. Why don't you do it? Factor 15 into prime numbers. Good. We can't break down 1 or 2 any further, but 9 can be factored. Why don't you factor 9 into primes? That's right. Now everything is factored as far as possible, so it's time to cancel. And remember, the way it works is you can cancel anything on top of either fraction with the same factor on the bottom of either fraction. Go ahead and click on what can be canceled. Yes. The next step is to multiply. What we do is multiply the tops and bottoms of what's left. I'll just rewrite the problem so you can see which factors didn't get canceled. Now go ahead and multiply. Very good. So we end up with 10 thirds. And since we canceled before multiplying, we know that this is already fully reduced. But that's how you multiply a whole number and a fraction. Let me just go over the two steps for you to make sure you've got it. The first step is to turn the whole number into a fraction by putting it over 1. We did that with 15. And then the second step is to just multiply the tops and bottoms of the two fractions. Pretty basic. Now let's talk about dividing a whole number in a fraction. Here's an example like that. 20 divided by 4 fifths. The first step, you can probably guess, is to turn 20 into a fraction by putting it over 1. Now we have two fractions that are divided, and we can divide normally, the way we learned before. And what we do, remember, is to invert the second fraction and multiply. I'll go ahead and change the division to multiplication, and then you do the inverting step. Just flip four-fifths upside down. Good. Now we've got 20 over 1 times 5 fourths. We have two fractions multiplied, and we know how to do that. Let's factor and cancel first. I'll do the factoring and canceling part for you this time, just to give you a rest. 20 factors is 4 times 5. And then 4 can be factored down to 2 times 2. And then we can factor the 4 on the bottom also as 2 times 2. And now we're ready to cancel. Why don't you click on what can be canceled? Good. Since everything canceled in the bottom of the second fraction, we need to put a 1 in there. And then now the next step is to multiply what's left in the tops and bottoms. Why don't you do it? That's right. 25 over 1 is the same as just 25. And so the final answer is 25. But that's how you divide a whole number and a fraction. You just put the whole number over 1. And then you'll have two fractions divided, and then you can divide those normally. One thing I should tell you is that the process would have been the same if the problem had been a fraction divided by a whole number, if it had been in the other order. For instance, let's say the problem had been 4 fifths divided by 20. See, the fraction's first now, and the whole number is second. But we would still just put 20 over 1. And now we have two fractions divided, and we divide the same way we always do, by inverting and multiplying. I won't go through the whole thing with you, but here are the basic steps. See, we invert and multiply, and we have 4 fifths times 1 twentieth, and then when we factor everything down to prime numbers, and cancel, and then when we multiply the factors that are left on the top and the bottom, we end up with 1 25th. But that's how you divide a whole number and a fraction, whether the whole number is listed first or second.
We've been talking a lot about multiplying and dividing fractions, but we haven't yet seen any problems from the real world like that. Well, there are actually a lot of real world problems where you have to multiply or divide fractions. Here's a pretty common example. A florist has 450 bouquets set out for Valentine's Day, but three-fifths of them are wilting. How many bouquets are wilting? In this problem, we basically need to find three-fifths of 450. Anytime you need to find a fraction of some number, you should multiply the fraction in the number. Some people like to put multiply in place of the word of. If you're trying to find three-fifths of 450, that's the same thing as three-fifths times 450. That's one way to remember that when you're finding the fraction of a number, you should multiply. But to multiply three-fifths in 450, we follow the same method we always do. We turn 450 into a fraction by putting it over 1, and now we multiply the two fractions. To factor 450 all the way down to prime numbers would take quite a bit of time, since 450 is a pretty big number. We can see from the problem that the only way we're going to be able to cancel anything is if 450 has a factor of 5, because there's just a 5 and a 1 on bottom with these two fractions. So what we can do is just break down 450 some of the way until we see a 5 that we can cancel. This is a little bit faster doing it like this. 450 is the same as 45 times 10, so we could start with that. That's an easy way to factor. And then 10 is the same as 2 times 5. And that gives us our 5, and now what we can do is just go ahead and cancel the 5s. And that leaves a 1 on bottom right here. Now, why don't you multiply what's left in the tops and bottoms? Great. And then 270 over 1 is the same as 270. That means 270 of the bouquets are wilting. But the main point is that to find a fraction of a number, you multiply. And then if it's a big number like 450, you may not have to factor it all the way down to prime numbers. You just need to factor it enough so that you can cancel everything that's in the bottom of the two fractions that you're dealing with. In some real world problems, you have to find a fraction of a fraction. Here's a quick example. Betty gave one third of a delicious pan of lasagna to her mother. But her mother gave one-fifth of that to the cat. What fraction of the lasagna pan did the cat get? See, this problem's basically asking us to find one-fifth of one-third of the lasagna pan. This is a fraction of a fraction problem. All you have to remember, though, is that of means multiply. So we just need to take one-fifth times one-third. Now let's just calculate this. There isn't anything to factor and cancel. Can't break down the ones, and then five and three are prime numbers. So all we have to do is multiply the tops and bottoms. Why don't you go ahead? Good. So the cat ate one fifteenth of the lasagna pan. But that's an example of a real world problem where you have to multiply two fractions. It's probably just kind of a real world problem. I don't know too many people that feed their cat lasagna. What about real world problems where you have to divide with fractions? These are a little bit tougher. Here's an example of one. Only one third of the cake was left, but Jack and his brother Joe wanted to share it equally. What fraction of the cake should each brother get? What we need to do to solve this is take one third and divide it in half since the two brothers are going to share the cake equally. And so that's one-third divided by two. And you know the way it works. We need to invert and multiply. Two's the same as two over one. We can write it that way. And now we just flip over two over one and make it one half. That's the reciprocal of two over one. And then we need to change the division to multiplication. And that gives us one-third times one-half. And then we can multiply these two fractions the way we always do. Why don't you go ahead and do the multiplication? There isn't anything to factor in cancel. You've got it. Cancel. So each brother should get one-sixth of the original cake. Sometimes in a real-world problem, you'll have to divide a whole number by a fraction. And that might look something like this. The coach bought seven pizzas for the victory party. If he gave each person one-fourth of a pizza, how many people were at the victory party? 
Here, since there are seven pizzas and each player is supposed to get one fourth of a pizza, we basically need to figure out how many one fourths are in seven. And that seems hard, but what if the problem involved simpler numbers? What if there were 10 pizzas and the players were supposed to get two pizzas each? Then it's pretty clear that we would just need to figure out 10 divided by two and that equals five. So there'd have to be five players. Well, we should do the same thing with seven and one fourth. We should divide seven divided by one fourth. And that's almost always a good strategy when you're trying to solve a word problem that has fractions in it. If it's a tough one, replace the numbers with simpler whole numbers and then figure out whether you're supposed to multiply or divide or whatever. Then do the same operation with the fractions. But let's go ahead and do seven divided by one fourth. First, we need to put seven over one, turn it into a fraction. And then now we just divide these two fractions the way we always do. We need to invert and multiply. I'll change the division to multiplication and then you do the inverting step. Good. Step. Now why don't you go ahead and multiply the tops and bottoms. That's right. 28 over 1 is just equal to 28. So there must have been 28 people at the victory party. But that's another example of dividing with fractions in the real world.